Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm Jackson Cannon, and soon I'll be joined by Ashley Sullivan, the bar manager of Salt Raw Bar and Restaurant in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Tonight, we're making drinks with Hendrix Gin, catching up on the restaurant and bar community, and of course, sharing tips the pros use to make great drinks at home. When you registered, if you clicked through to Gordon's Wine and Spirits and purchased the Hendrix Cocktail Kit, well, you have everything you need. Profits from those kits go to Off Their Plate. This is a great charity that buys nourishing meals from restaurants that need the business and distributes them to frontline workers and others in need. All the while, we'll be taking your questions from the chat. And without uh, too much more, let's start talking about what you need. So I've got this great bottle of Hendrix Gin, our sponsor for tonight. Um, grab yours or a bottle of, uh, of another favorite if you have one. To make the ritual gin and tonic, besides the Hendrix gin, um, I'm gonna use a little bit of lemon, some cucumber, obviously. Um, and if you have some other favorites that you like to work with, we're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, if you can use peppercorns, I've got some pink peppercorns, mint or other herbs, things like that. Um, and uh, of course, your favorite tonic water. For the south side, in addition to your gin, you'll need lime juice, or the controversial lemon lime split, um, simple syrup, mint, and that's about it. For ice, we're just gonna use regular cubed ice that we get out of uh, a nice mold like this, little one by one cubes. These are good and firm and really frozen solid. They're gonna work really well for shaking a drink and great for building our gin tonic. Um, for glassware, I like a, a nice cocktail glass, a coupe like this for my south side. And I'm gonna use something a little bigger, you know, when I, when I drink a London dry style gin tonic, a lot of times I'll use something focused, really narrow, really classic, like a highball or Collins glass. For this more kind of Spanish ritual, I really like the bigger bulb that you get out of a wine glass. There's a little more room for the gin to kind of mix around with the ingredients and I'm gonna enjoy mine that way. Of course, if you don't have that glassware, anything will do. Uh, both these drinks can work well in a rocks glass as well. Um, you'll need a shaker for the south side. Um, and if you don't have uh, a tin on tin like we like to use, um, just some good sealing Tupperware will also get the job done uh, to get that drink aerated and really shaken around. Uh, something to measure with, we use these jiggers uh, in the bar. But if you don't have one of these, every kitchen has a tablespoon measure. Just remember one tablespoon is half an ounce. So if we're having a recipe calling for uh, an easy two ounce pour out of the jigger of Hendrix gin, you're gonna do four tablespoons to get the same amount. Uh, cutting board, definitely, and a knife that you like, some tweezers, tongs, and some little side plates to move your garnishes around is also a really good idea. Uh, my friend Ashley Sullivan has been working in hospitality since she was 16 years old. After a few years off to start a family, she jumped back in on the opening team of Salt, a family-owned raw bar and fine cuisine restaurant in Plymouth, Mass. She's bar manager at Salt and a town meeting member for Plymouth on the energy committee, as well as a member of a restaurant sustainability group. During the initial lockdowns due to COVID-19, she would post on Twitter asking people what they had on hand and help them create great cocktails at home. That so embodies her drive and dedication to sustainable cocktails at home and in the bar. If you'd like to support her directly, please hit her tip jar during the program. Her Venmo is at ashley Sarandagai. She is a thoughtful, skilled bartender and a gin lover. Welcome back to Cocktail Club, Ashley. Hi, how are you? You might be on mute. These things happen in the in the era of Zoom bartending. How are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing well. What's new down in Plymouth? How's business? Um, we're just gearing up for a really busy summer right now. I'm very excited. It was, uh, we were lucky we had a very busy winter. So we're just trying to get some staff on board and get everyone prepared for a, a busy summer. That's awesome to hear. Mm -hmm. um, how, how's, how's staffing going? Um, I just feel like most restaurants are having staffing issues, especially um, kitchen-wise and front of house, whether it be people don't feel 
safe to go back to work yet or just can't find the time to do it. But um, we have some great people coming in. We're excited. It's going to be fun. Well, that's awesome. Glad to hear it. What mm -hmm. um, What are some ways that uh, that we can support you down there? Um, oh, just um, if, we, if we're not, if we're not quite ready to come in, can we uh, get a gift card and start thinking about that July trip down? Down oh yeah, way. absolutely. Yeah, we uh we offer gift cards. We do to go cocktails. We uh do to go meals as well. So if you're ever craving some noodles or maki or ramen and espresso uh, martini, I, I, we can get that all set up for you. I'll take all of that and a triple espresso martini to go. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. Um, that that kind of got me in mind of making a cocktail. Should we build out a a nice gin tonic together? Yeah, let's do it. You into it? All right. So um, this is one of those ones where uh, the build for me is kind of like fun and important. I, um, you know, we want things cold that are effervescent cocktails to keep them cold, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll keep the glass in the freezer. I'm using a wine glass, so I'm not doing that. I did put a chill on my gin. And mm -hmm. if you're worried about how that interacts with things, like it does just fine. It's got alcohol in it and it still will bring out a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna go about building this by putting in my ingredients, like kind of right into my gin. And I did a little bit of slicing beforehand, but um, with Hendrix where the botanicals are, um, a, a lot of things that you would expect in the background, but in the forefront, this really great cucumber and rose flavor, I wanna do a little bit of cucumber. And instead of a, a big long ribbon, I'm going to just cut a little bit on a bias um, to get some kind of nice long slices. Um, and the sequencing of all this is really important. You know, I juiced my lemon for um, our upcoming drink before we got on, but I made a couple of quick slices first. So um, you may want to slice your lemons kind of like in this half moon shape. And I'm gonna slice a little bit of orange to go with these kind of, what I think are kind of fun, large slices of cucumber. Um, and I'm gonna do the orange the way that we do most of these half moon twists too, so everybody can kind of slice along. Um, just gonna take the end off and make that a little bit smaller. And then take a couple pieces off like this. So again, we have that really kind of nice half moon shape. I've got that kind of all ready to go. I brought out a little pink peppercorn, which is a favorite of mine. We took a lot of interesting advanced questions that, that really relate to what we're doing with this drink. Um, people in Europe have seen like little black peppercorns dropped in. And the gin tonic, especially in Spain, is kind of this high art ritual at this point that uh, has a fun and interesting history. We actually delved into that a little bit on boston.com. So there's an article you can read more about that um, posted to the website. Um, but we're going to do a kind of a la minute thing here where we put the gin in the glass, then we're going to put our garnish in next, and we're going to put our tonic water in, and then we're going to load our ice in. You're all sliced up and ready to go over there, aren't you, Ashley? Sure I am. All right, so I'm going to start with two ounces of Hendrix gin. I'm building this right in the glass. And now I'm just going to place a few of my kind of favorite garnishes. I like a little bit of orange. I think lemon is kind of lighter and lovely. When I'm doing a, uh, you know, a, a, a real kind of straight ahead London dry gin, tonic in a tall glass. I'll use a slice of lime, but the Hendrix, I really like that lighter, more lush uh, kind of flavor I get from combining orange and lemon. And of course, the main ingredient in here is a cucumber to really uh, accentuate the cucumber distilled into the Hendrix. And then just by getting these all kind of into the glass, there's a little tiny bit of infusion that just starts kind of right off the bat. Um, I wasn't going to do it, but I think I'll do just a couple of pink peppercorns for fun. A 
And now we have this lovely uh, fever tree elderflower tonic water. Um, if you don't, if you really love the flavor of elderflower, there are elderflower liqueurs out there. Um, and of course, you could just try a couple of drops of that in with your Hendrix. It's really quite lovely. Um, I love what Fever Tree has done here with this product. It's really tasty. And for a gin and tonic like this, you want about four to six ounces if you've done two ounces. Um, I'm going to do about half of my seven ounce bottle and save a little bit to pour over the top. But you can kind of see the action right as you pour that in. It's just turning around, it's giving off flavor from those garnishes. And now I'm just going to gently pretty much drop in as much ice as I can get in there with all these other fun things that I put in this cocktail. So wine glass like that, three feels pretty good. I'm going to give this another little kind of light stir. And now I've got a Hendrix cucumber, orange, lemon, pink, peppercorn, elderflower tonic. Cheers, Ashley. This smells amazing. Ooh. It's so refreshing. It's such wonderful gin, such a great cocktail. And it is a true cocktail. I think people like to think that highballs aren't, but everything's here, right? We got sugar, bitter, water, spirit, all together. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did kind of a summer prep, even though, you know, you, you, you can never tell here in New England, I, they say, if you don't like the weather, stay a day. Um, it snapped a little cold today for, mm -hmm. uh, but I, but I was already kind of committed to this summer prep. So I'm drinking that dreaming of a warmer day, but in the deeper winter, I still love a, 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 a good gin and tonic with a little rosemary stuck in. Oh, yeah. um, what are some other favorite uh, botanicals you like to use? Um, I love using basil with gin, whether it be in a tonic or a gin basil smash. I feel like mm. the herbaceousness of the basil plays very well with the gin. That's a good one. Have you done any of the winter spices? Uh, all spice. Yeah. Awesome. A little bit, of, little bit of cinnamon dropped into a tonic. Um, in the summer months, I really like doing raspberries or strawberries and basil or strawberry and mint in a gin and tonic as well. Oh, that sounds, that sounds terrific. Strawberries are going to be here before we know it. I know. I'm so excited. Did you do anything fun with them on the menu last year? Um, we had some strawberry margaritas, but um, I didn't use too many strawberries. I had a strawberry garden um, growing in my yard, so I was using it more for at-home cocktails. That's fun. Yeah, I even yeah, that's a that's a that's a great flavor with this gin, for sure. Um, turning to the chat, like if right off the bat, um, it's interesting because a few years back, right, it's just when you reached for Hendrix, it was just Hendrix. Mm -hmm. That was it. Um, amazing, wonderful new gin, and now they have some really distinctive and 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 purposeful other bottlings. Um, they're mm -hmm. our sponsor tonight, so we're lucky to have. Um, with us, their brand ambassador, Eric Anderson, and going to turn it over to him for a couple of minutes to answer all your questions about the various extensions of the brand and the core brand and what's behind all that. So welcome, Eric, and take it away, brother. Thank you very much, Jackson, Ashley. It's great to be with you uh, tonight. Um, yes, yeah, so greetings, everyone. Um, so uh, just a massive thank you to, to both of you and Boston.com, of course, for including us tonight uh, here on, uh, on the cocktail hour. Um, so my name is Eric Anderson, Ambassador at Hendrix Gin here on the East Coast. Um, and that gin, gin tonic, uh, Jackson, looked really, really good. I wish I had one in my hand right now. Um, and those peppercorns are really popular as well in my home country of Sweden, where you know, bartenders add them to their Hendrix tonic. But a little bit more on uh, our gin first. So Hendrix uh, original, if we're starting there, um, it's distilled in small batches in Scotland using two different types of stills, 11 botanicals and infusions of cucumbers and roses. So yes, there is cucumber in the gin. So uh, the process that we use to make gin is a little bit different from other gins where we use two different stills, one that produces a very floral, light, fragrant distillate 
and the second wine more pungent, rich, and heavier distillate. And then you blend the two together and add the essences of the cucumbers and roses. It's quite a painstaking process, we know, but uh, Leslie Gracie, our master distiller, she swears by it. And by the way, she was awarded uh, with a lifetime achievement of Gin, uh, Gin Magazine last month. So this is really cool. But I'm gonna turn to a little uh, interesting part of the uh, Hendrix Gin right now, because we have a new variant and it is called Hendrix Lunar. So this new gin, like its predecessor, Midsummer Solstice, is infused with, uh, it's coming from the uh, Leslie Grace's cabinet of curiosities. And the gin inside is based on the same formula as Hendrix original, but it also had essences of flowers that bloom only during the night or under the light of the moon, if you wish. So you know how a flower garden can smell different in the daytime and the night? Well, right, that's the point. So uh, those night blooming florals are the key aromas in the Hendrix Luna. So we have a bunch of great cocktails on HendrixGin.com and of course our Ginstagram Hendrix Gin and Hendrix Gin US, which is uh, our, um, our US handle, which is just launched now. So uh, it's really, really great to be with you tonight. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, for tuning in. And uh, you can also follow me at young Mr. Flanagan. And Ashlyn Jackson, uh, over to you. Young Mr. Flanagan, great cocktail reference, Eric. And thank you very much for that information. Um, yeah, really, really great. Uh, Great variations on, on a wonderful core distillate. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, appreciate it. Cheers. A uh, couple of quick questions from the chat coming back. Hey, can we sub seltzer? Yes, gin and soda is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the same rich history, curative properties and delightful bitter taste as tonic, but it is definitely an important healthy option, especially use a quality seltzer that doesn't have strange additives in it. If it does have a little salinity, you're looking for uh, real sea salt being used or something great like that in there. Can you do a plain tonic or another tonic? Absolutely. Um, yeah, good stuff. Great. Yeah, they're asking, uh, Ashley, what is your favorite gin cocktail to make? Ooh, like before, Gin Basil Smash is one of my favorites. It's the perfect summertime sipper for me personally. I love basil. I love a more citrusy and herbaceous drink. So um, I like to do a lot of those. What's the most unusual fruit that you've thrown into a mashup like that? Ooh, I'm trying to think of what we would have on hand that's a little unusual as far as fruit goes. I think dragon fruit would be pretty good in a gin cocktail. It's not like an overpowering fruit, but it definitely has that hint of sweetness to it. That sounds fun. For people who don't know that flavor profile, can you tell us a little bit about what to expect? If we, I see, it, we, I see the dragon fruit in the store all the time, but I pass it yeah. by because I don't really know what to do with it. Oh, absolutely. So it almost has the texture of a kiwi. Um, it doesn't have so much of a bite that a kiwi does. Um, it's a lot more, has a mellow sweetness to it. It's very delicious. Um, well, that does sound delightful. Hey, mm -hmm. just really quickly, we're not going to go into depth about it, but taking a few questions about styles of gin, I do want to say um, a lot of times we're making drinks with London dry gins. Those are big mm -hmm. brands that you know. Um, and that's just that juniper forward flavor. Gotta love it. Really launching uh, a lot of other um, new gins was Hendrix departure from that profile and has become really a beloved gin with cucumber and rose notes way up forward of the juniper. And then that spawned a whole movement West, new Western gins. There's all kinds of them. Um, you know, find, find your favorite flavor. There's just so many to try. Um, you know, talk a little bit with your local uh, liquor store representative. If you know one that you like, go in with that information. Tell them you like that one. You want to try something a little bit different. They'll land you in the right family for you. Cool. Um, and a question about herbs. We've talked about basil. We've talked about rosemary. I think 
I think one thing that uh, this time of year to be thinking about with um, with gin that I like a lot is tarragon. Um, oh, love that kind of like licorice flavor. We had an advanced question, Ashley, from somebody saying, what else can I do with this bottle of absinthe? It's it's like <laughs> never ending, you know, because yeah. I was like, oh, it's in it's in a dozen cocktails, but it's one drop in this cocktail and two drops in that cocktail. And or a mist. This is actually, yeah. a, this is a mist it. Um, this is actually a really interesting place to try a little of that uh, kind of coating of the glass, um, but you're going to run into some really fun and funky territory uh, with different gins and, and some of them are going to be great with that anise flavor and some of them are not going to be your favorite, but mm -hmm. you, you can only learn by doing. Uh, hey, let's get that other cocktail going. All right, great. So I'm going to be make doing... Southside for us? Yeah, of course. I'm going to be mixing up a classic south side. So what you're going to need is a coupe. Um, so Jackson and I were kind of going over the history of the south side earlier. And it's really funny because with a lot of these classic cocktails, there's so many different stories on how they originated. So um, he sent me this really great article and I read through it about these three different stories on where it could have started from. So that's funny. Either way, maybe we don't know where it came from, but we do know that it is a delicious and refreshing cocktail. So what you're gonna start with is five to six pieces of mint. So I like to clap them. If you want to muddle, go ahead. I would lightly muddle that. Um, when you clap the mint, you're releasing those beautiful oils and you get this great smell already. I can smell it all the way down here. Um, you're going to need two ounces of Hendrix gin. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Or the lemon lime split. Are you using lemon juice, Jackson, or this is, are you doing this is my split? first this, this is my first lemon lime split. Oh, interesting. Ashley and I both like the part in this article where they're talking about was it lemon, was it lime, and this place was swearing it was lemon lime split, and then he sort of asked the question rhetorically and answered it. He, he goes, "Why lemon lime? Because f you, why? That's why." Right. <laughs> so we just kind of cracked up. So <laughs> I thought I'd give it a try. I do it in my Ramos Fizz. Why not? So let's see. And then you're also going to need three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, which I got in my lovely box. So then you're going to add some ice to your tin. Get that on nice and tight. Give it a good shake. All right, and then we're gonna strain. I like to double strain because sometimes the mints will break up and I usually don't mind those little pieces, but just to give it a cleaner taste, I will double strain. I know the color comes a little bit differently to everybody in these broadcasts. Exactly. Wow, this really picks up a lot of that green of the mint without even muddling it all that much, you know? Mm -hmm. And you don't need to garnish, however, I do like a little bit of greenery with my cocktail, so I'll just add a little one. I like a little extra mint flavor on mine, so I'm gonna treat it like I do. Sometimes a lemon twist, I'm gonna put it on and then kind of take it away. Cheers. Cheers. Delicious. Mm. So refreshing. Oh, they're asking for a recipe for your basil smash. Can you give them your, like, give out your uh, social handle or something where they can reach out to you to yeah, get that absolutely. recipe from you? 
So I'm um, on Twitter. I am at Ashley Alexis with two S's for Alexis. Um, happy to answer any questions on there. But usually for a gin basil smash, I'll get four to five big basil leaves, muddle them up, two ounces of gin, an ounce of simple, an ounce of lime. Um, shake it up really well. You get this beautiful bright green color. It's delicious. Um, and I usually serve it straight up. I know some people like it on the rocks, depending. Nice. The, um, yeah, it, 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 I, I drink those too fast if they're on crushed ice. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're just like, whoa. Yeah. Well, that's um, how I was with the whiskey smash. I'd have one and then six later. I'm like, how'd that happen? Yeah. Well, you know, because they're good and good for you. Yeah. Has a tendency to happen. The uh, uh, question about how to use some of the herbs we're talking about in the gin tonic ritual, just kind of like slide those right in when mm -hmm. the gin goes in before you add the tonic uh, or the ice and let them infuse their flavor in a little bit naturally that way. And then in the case of a sour like uh, a south side, or you want to create your own variation on that, get some thyme or some tarragon or some lavender, just put that right in in place of the mint, give it a shake and a strain, and you'll be off to creating maybe the next knock knock gin cocktail with a backstory that no one can quite verify. True. <laughs> uh. This is great. So I was reading that you can also turn this into a fizz. You just serve it in a Collins glass and then just top it with soda water, which that's, I think I'm going to try a, later because that sounds delicious. That's a delight. You know, the other thing is that old Royale treatment. You just uh, mm -hmm. you add, top it with some champagne in a coupe and call it South, so South Side Royale, you know, mm -hmm. um, or, or Grand South Side, that kind of thing. Um, this is uh this is such a great drink. It it it's the I'm doing the split lemon lime mm -hmm. and it's it's cool because it like it definitely tastes like one thing, but it doesn't quite taste like either of those citruses. Um mm -hmm. I'm getting like a really supportive platform for the botanicals to mm -hmm. be coming through. And it just this feels like a, a drink that I could you know, make, make my every day, I think. Yeah. I was going to ask you how that split was tasting. I'm intrigued. Mm. So I might have to make one of those as well later. I've muddled cucumber into this too. Um, and a cucumber is such a, a chameleon. It's kind of, mm -hmm. it sort of like comes into a cocktail like this and is, brings a lot of like, um, it ties the vegetal notes to the citrus notes with almost like a, a melon-esque quality. It's just mm -hmm. so interesting to me. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it gives off, um, it really adds to the texture of, of most drinks that it's in it. And it really can slip into a lot of these kind of garden sours and just mm -hmm. really enhance the experience. It's not really a different drink. It's just a little bit better way to drink them. Yeah. Um, spearmint or peppermint, you know a little bit more about farming than I do. This is always, I always feel like those really kind of recessive specialty versions of mint, they mm -hmm. just get taken over like by the weed mint that grows whenever I plant it in the ground. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of what we use for cocktails. I, I've never, like chocolate mint, I've never got anything like that to really express in a cocktail. So um, um, chocolate mint's actually really nice. It has um, this, this deeper aroma and flavor to it. I've used it. We actually um, had some chocolate mint out on our patio at our restaurant. So sometimes we'd like run out and grab a little bit and um, use them in cocktails. Well, would you use it more of a garnish or, or put it um, in? You like, can use it as a garnish, um, but sometimes I would muddle it into a cocktail and it gives it this, this whole different level of flavor. Whereas this kind of mint that we're using, it's very bright. The chocolate mint gives it like this deeper, almost more savory taste to it. That's fun. Yeah. Um, so Jackson. Three, yes. Oh, I was just gonna ask oh. you, um, say someone went out and grabbed a bunch of mint to make cocktails for tonight. Like what other gin cocktails would you make with mint? 
who besides the variations on on um on this one you know i actually love making juleps with gin yes. um and it's it's not something I, I love using gin in a lot of those ways like in an old-fashioned as well too you know mm -hmm. um and especially like if i have a lot of mint and i i don't i can enjoy like maybe one sour like sometimes a second one but i don't do well with a lot of citrus in a sitting. I like, I crave it, have one, and I, I kind of can't drink a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, a julep is just that sugar and mint and the gin, um, sometimes maybe a little bit of champagne, sometimes maybe just a drizzle, just a drizzle of cognac mm -hmm. over a gin. Um, julep is just it's living, you know? So I think if, if somebody's feeling like, I don't want this mint to go bad, you know, like, all yeah right, well, let's use it all in like two more drinks right so yeah um what about you great yeah i, I mean that sounds um, amazing oh here you i would go. never would think to add... drizzle some cognac on the julep yeah. that's a, uh, i have to know, try it, that it, it, yeah it's nice it plays really brandy plays really well with gin cognac especially um the uh there's here's a quick question why three quarters of an ounce of citrus instead of one to two, um, boy, that's like a, a big can of worms, but I'll just say really quickly, <laughs> I'll just say this very quickly. It's based off of thinking in, in terms of one and a half ounces of spirit to three quarters ounce of citrus to three quarters ounce of sugar. Mm -hmm. That's called classic proportions or two, one, one. And when you make a decision to go to two ounces, three quarter, three quarter, you're respecting this like baked in advantage of having your your citrus and sugar in a pretty even place. Now that, that those do move around depending on the sweetener. Sometimes it's an ounce to a three quarter ounce, whatever. <clears throat> Lots of variations to this, but this is where this comes from. <clears throat> and then certain drinks just they just do better at that two, three quarter, three quarter. But it still feels like classic proportions plus a little more spirit because you're locked in to the same sweet and sour ratio. Mm -hmm. So like daiquiris and south sides and a lot of drinks like that become two, three quarter, three quarter as the default, but they still present like classic two, one, one sours. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's not, does it sound like I answered them? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then here's another one. Uh, you might like this one. How about adding an egg white to a south side? Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> a gin flip? Do it. Why not? I want to do it. I know. Right I want to go now, grab an egg you know? right now. Um, it's probably got a name. It's probably like a Boston South Side or something like that, you know, because a lot of the there, there was this moment when some of the early sours, the Boston style was the egg white style and whiskey sours, especially. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if that's even though we don't have a South Side, we may have a Boston South Side after you and I get done with it. So, oh, my goodness, um, that sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, well, gosh, it's been so great to catch up with you again over a couple of drinks, I know. Ashley. Thanks for inviting me back. This has been great. Great to have you. Wish you a very busy uh, summer. If anybody has questions, you want to stalk me out there. I'm Cannon Jacks at Twitter and Instagram and Jackson Cannon on Facebook. Um, please show Ashley some love at her Venmo, Ashley Saranda guy. Um, and join us again next week. 7 p.m. when Sabrina Kershaw and I will be making drinks with cognac. And make sure when you register to follow the link uh, on the sign-up page to Gordon's Wine and Spirits and pick up your Boston.com cocktail cognac kit. You'll be supporting off their plate and getting everything you need for next week's cocktail club. Thanks to Eric and Hendrix. Thanks to Ashley so much. And thank you, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.